Torchlight Infinite is a free-to-play cross-platform ARPG that released in October 2022. I covered this game during the closed beta and was quite impressed by the gameplay, in that abilities had very low to no cooldowns, it was super fast-paced, and every level up felt impactful. Recently, Torchlight Infinite has just launched its Season 2, and recent reviews for the game on Steam have gone from mixed to very positive, following numerous positive changes. So in this video, we're going to check out the game in 2023, get all the way to level 80 as a free-to-play player, see what awaits us at Endgame, and experiment with some crazy Berserker builds. This video is sponsored by Torchlight Infinite, so if you like what you see, then click the link in the description below to download the game for free. Torchlight Infinite in 2023, five different free-to-play heroes to start out, with an additional two heroes that can be purchased in-game, with the newest one being Katai Erika. The big berserker guy, this is who I'm gonna pick. I played him in the beta and he was incredibly fun. The lazy peon, let's go. First flame brought mankind into its most glorious era. Did it really? It's nice to know. Skip. We don't care about no story, we care about big damage. I think I said this when I first ever covered this game, but I love it when ARPGs give you a little taste of endgame combat speed and endgame damage just when you first start your character. Helps you decide whether or not you made the uh, correct choice with your character or not. I'm pretty sure the Berserker is absolutely nutty at endgame. Our future girlfriend descends from the sky to lift us out of this shit place we're stuck in. She is almost the size of my character's hand. And now our damage resets back to hitting nines and tens. If I remember correctly, this leap attack thing was the most fun ability in the game. Cause you can just spam it over and over. When I played this game during the beta, I thought this leap attack ability was so fun because you can just spam it, that I thought it was a bug and you wasn't supposed to do that. But no, it isn't a bug. Abilities in Torchlight Infinite don't have stupidly long cooldowns. You can just spam skills, which I really like about the game. Big damage, level four, level six, seven. So now I've finished the tutorial phase and other players have started zoning in at the quest hub. Eight, and it's dead, GG, level nine. Level 10, oh fuck, we get my inventory is full. Get rid of it all. Next boss, not die please. We're gonna get good at the game now, I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. Okay. We're getting good. Had to speak too soon, didn't I? Every time. The thing that intrigued me the most the last time I played this game was the build possibilities. You've got all of these different mods that you can put on each ability. You've got many different talent trees and very shortly into the game, your character starts to feel kind of crazy. Awesome fast attack speed now. Very quickly becoming more and more powerful. 13. Every level up feels pretty impactful because you instantly get these things in the top right telling you about all of the things you can upgrade. This seems new. I don't remember selecting hero traits during the beta. Once again, this adds more customization for how you can build your character. 14, more upgrades. Ding, ding, dong. Every talent that I get to spend, massively impactful. Bunch of stuff to claim. Once again, fantastic audio visual feedback from the UI. Feels good to click on stuff. From here, it shouldn't be too long until I've caught up to where I was during my first impressions of the game. But for this video, we're gonna get all the way to end game. Level 15, 16. Kinda level up super quick when you get to this second area. I've got one of these summon things, so let's see if we can summon something. Maybe it makes us more strong. Bit of gacha. We got a squirrel. 17. My little otter's actually following me around, I've only just noticed. Read all of that dialogue, as you can see. I can read really quickly. Talent of mine. Right, I think it's at this point where I ended my first impressions the last time I covered this game, so everything beyond this point should be somewhat new to me. Level 20, and that should be another big upgrade with the talents. God, I'm attacking so quickly now. Feels good. Now that I'm level 20, this is the most powerful I've felt relative to the mobs that I've been fighting so far. The mob density is starting to increase, which I like. Looks like another legendary has popped up, level 24. At this rate, we're gonna be level 80 in no time. 25. There's actually quite a lot of players running around in the main hub. As I'm on the Asia servers, I've got a lot of Chinese, Korea, Japanese people playing. I wonder if I can get some kind of pet or convenience item that will loot for me. I'm feeling a little bit lazy to click on loot at this point. Surely something like that would exist. It's getting a little bit ridiculous now, this attack speed. The game's making me feel like a bloody speedrunner. Level 30, any big upgrades? So I've killed him twice, and now he's split into two. Oh, he's dealing damage. 
respect the damage. That's the first time I've died in like an hour and a half. Bit of unexpected challenge coming in there. I just enter the room and just whack him twice. Why? He's dead. Bosses are starting to kill me again. Why? Ugh, that was close. Are we good? He's supposed to be dead. He's a mute. Get inside the shield. Your current resistance is too low. Increase resistance to 75% to increase chance of survival. I was doing just fine. I just ignored the mechanic. Get inside the shield, right? There it is. Mechanics. And he's removed his legs. Somehow that's made him more powerful. I feel like I'd be more powerful with my legs. I, I don't know. Never mind. He is more powerful without his legs. Maybe going full glass cannon is starting to bite me in the ass. Respect the mechanics. This fight is actually quite impressive. Oh, my editor's gonna have fun editing all of these deaths. Hayden, don't make me look too bad at the game, please. I'm actually really good at this game. What I'm trying to do is lower my skill level to the average player so I can review it more effectively. Like that. Like the average person, they'd get a little bit confused. <laughs> okay, we killed him. Completely legitimately. I hope people don't mistake me for being a game journalist because that's how I feel with how I'm pl playing today. Back on the airship and apparently we're now heading to the desert. Oh, looks like we've run into an ambush. Been saved by a new waifu. Light wielding cat girl, Esmeralda. Nice. She's gonna be a fan favorite, isn't she? It feels good when I crit in this game because my crits are so much higher than my normal attacks. They're like five sometimes. Okay, phone. Thanks for interrupting my YouTube commentary. Hello? I've been getting so much loot recently that I'm sorting through it about twice every map now. The game does have a loot fill, so I should probably apply that. 33. Once again, had a significant increase in damage. When it comes to the boss fights, I feel like I would probably play better if you couldn't instantly re-enter the boss room with the boss on the same amount of health and just finish it off. There's like no repercussions for dying at all. So whenever I fight a boss, I'm just super lazy. I'll just tank all of his attacks and just deal the most damage possible because usually that's the fastest way of killing the boss. It doesn't matter if you die. Maybe later on there's some game modes where it does matter more, but during the actual campaign, dying doesn't matter whatsoever. Applying this loot filter has helped. It's now only dropping epics and the vacuum cleaner has arrived. Big damage on my earlobes. I wonder if my build's going to be viable when I get to end game. Because I'm not following any build guides. I'm just clicking on what I think looks fun and looks big damage. Probably the most fun way to play these games, really. I've got another draw token, so let's draw. Give me something good. Epic, please. What a handsome creature that is. This reminds me of one of the characters from Monsters, Inc. I like that I feel comfortable just spending a lot of time in this menu experimenting and trying to figure out what's going to do the most damage because there's so many little augments and passives that you can add to your abilities to really make the most unique builds. Me playing around with my abilities and augments has taken my DPS from 3.5k to 4.7k. Me just experimenting, reading and messing around, that's how impactful the talents and augments are in this game. <laughs> I'm a lot more squishy now though. Doesn't matter when you've got big damage though, does it? I'm such a simple guy, in almost every ARPG my approach is full glass cannon big damage. At some point it's gonna bite me in the ass. Level 40, we're probably approaching the end of chapter 3. Okay, now we're gonna kill the Sun Queen. She's looking pretty chill, not really phased by me. Big anime titties popped out, of course. Love to see it. The plan is nuke her down before her mechanics start to play out, which I will inevitably fail at. Please stay tuned for future updates. Oh, wait, am I like fully caught up to the main campaign? Nether Realm Mentor. So this is how I'm probably gonna get to level 80. So for this Nether Realm thing, I just need to defeat the bosses. And in the top right, it also indicates how many bosses are on the map and how many I need to kill. So I'm one out of three at the moment. My character is just feeling like an absolute god right now. The crazy thing is I'm only halfway to max level as well. Like how much more crazy can the gameplay even get? To the final boss room. It's gonna be an actual challenging boss fight or yeah, not super challenging. I'm pretty strong right now dead clean so that's the neville realm done then we click on this what's this a uh, hundred percent chance for void pirates to drop hero relics oh i get to choose some kind of void seal thing so now we need to defeat waves of monsters so going through these different stages is going to give me various augments 
I guess. Killed the bosses. The tentacles have unwrapped. There's a treasure chest. I open the treasure chest. And we go to like level two or something. Kill the boss again. Go through another void thing. Dude, what, what is even going on? It's not, there's like no story or context really to what I'm actually doing right now. It's going through like endless stages. I suppose I just keep doing these all the way till level 80. 45, 35 levels to go. Level 50, that's gotta be a big upgrade somewhere, surely. I'm getting so much loot now. It's kind of difficult to loot everything. I really want auto loot. I think I can get auto loot with the battle pass for free finally okay i have got auto loot that was good timing let's see if this actually works it doesn't auto loot weapons unfortunately but it's auto looting resources so that's a few less clicks at the very least and now we're on chapter five never realm invasion two so basically what i was doing all throughout chapter four is just going to repeat throughout chapter five and eventually we're going to get to level 80 so at this point i'm going to put some music on maybe watch a stream on my other monitor and blast my way to level 80. we're gonna need a montage, montage. a sports training montage. montage show a lot of things happening at once remind everyone of what's going on what's and going with Shot show a little improvement to show it raw would take too long. That's called a montage. Oh, level 60. So now I've completed five out of five for this nether realm, and I think I've unlocked a boss. Alright, let's give it a try. A remaining attempt five. If I die more than five times, that's it. GG. Oh, and we've got some actual mechanics to deal with here. It's going to involve some getting good on my part. Luckily, I have fantastic mobility, and there is a lot of stuff to dodge. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. Actually fighting a boss and having to really pay attention to the mechanics. And there it is. Okay, no phase two. New Cinder received a bunch of super legendary stuff. And that was pretty cool. So you basically go through all of these nether realm stages. You do like five of them, then you unlock the final boss, which has special loot. Fairly cool gameplay loop. Surely it has dropped an upgrade for me. Are you fu I spent the next day or two grinding the nether realm from level 60 to 80 in what was quite a formulaic and repetitive process. Basically fight through various stages until you've gained enough insight to fight the main boss of the area. Upon beating the boss you get a boss loot and one cinder. Collect enough cinders and you unlock more areas with different bosses and loot. Each time you beat the area boss for the first time on a new difficulty, you then unlock the next difficulty known as time mark levels, basically better loot and stronger mobs. During this process I did find it to get quite repetitive and I found it annoying that killing void pirates doesn't give you any XP, even though they're more challenging than the standard mobs. I was also confused by loot in this game. There were many times where I'd get a full inventory of legendary and pink loot, only to have zero upgrades, even though I'd still got old campaign gear equipped from 30 levels ago. 99%, come on, give me level 80 before we hit the boss. There it is, level 80. It's been quite the grind. So level 80 isn't max level, it's just where you get your last hero trait. So that's why 80 was the level that I was aiming for. We're at the point where it's extremely rare that I get an upgrade from killing mobs. Oh my god, I got an upgrade. So now I've completed nine stages of the Thunder Wastes, I can now take on the boss. I've already killed this boss a few times on lower difficulties, but it seems as though on higher difficulties he gets more mechanics and his mechanics are more intense. For a game that's also available on mobile, it's very intense. Like, I can't imagine doing this boss on mobile, to be honest. I think it'd be too difficult. In terms of difficulty, it's as challenging as any PC game. That was a challenge. I'm about 20 to 30 hours into playing this game at the moment. I haven't spent a penny, but I think now would be a good time to wrap up this video because to unlock the rest of the Nether Realm, it would take a lot of grinding. To unlock the final boss, the Lord of Calamity, and basically beat the game, I need 35 cinders. I've currently got 19. So I'd basically need to go through these stages another 16 times and beat 16 bosses, each of which drop one cinder to unlock this. 
Upon further research, after completing the Thunder Wastes Nether Realm quest, you actually unlock another endgame activity called Path of the Brave, which features 45 stages of increasingly difficult arena combat, where players face swarms of monsters and combinations of difficult bosses in order to earn increasingly valuable items such as currency, exclusive support skills, memory cards, and legendary equipment. Apparently, this part of endgame will be something you progress through even after you've defeated the current final boss of the nether realm called the lord of calamity but to be honest i was 25 to 30 hours deep at this point and it was beyond the scope of this video so after playing torchlight infinite for about 20 to 25 hours and getting to end game my thoughts are as follows the gameplay is responsive and lightning fast the combat as a whole feels impactful and satisfying you're given an immense amount of freedom when it comes to creating your own build and with every talent point you spend you can immediately feel its impact Impact. The game has its own identity with a unique art style, the boss fights both at endgame and during the campaign are challenging, and the game can be fully enjoyed free to play for the vast majority of your time playing it. Grinding the nether realm from 60 to 80 felt quite repetitive, more could be done at this stage of the game to add variation to the gameplay. The fact that void pirates don't give you any XP when you killed them made this entire feature of the game feel like a waste of time whilst I was grinding from 60 to 80. Whilst I appreciate that there's auto loot for resources, I wish there was auto loot for weapons too. From 60 to 80, the sense of progression from weapon and armor drops feels confusing. There was times where a piece of campaign gear I got 30 levels prior was better than legendary level 70 gear that I'd just got from a boss. It didn't really make much sense to me. The game did a poor job of explaining the gear, enchanting and empowerment system once I reached endgame. These systems are very important and you'll end up hitting a wall if you don't understand them. Whilst I did see many other players running around the hub areas, I didn't ever get the opportunity to do any multiplayer content, this wasn't something that the game pushed in any way. Overall, Torchlight Infinite is an incredibly fun game when it comes to the most important things in an ARPG, which is fun, satisfying gameplay, with the freedom to experiment with many different build possibilities. The main issue I had with the game was that it got a bit repetitive at certain times. However, I think a lot of the cons are listed are easily fixable with future updates, and I would expect the game to improve even more over the next year. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Torchlight Infinite in the comments below, and click the link in the description to download the game for free right now. Social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.